Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Thursday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia. On the socials, go there. Join the militia. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. We appreciate all of you. Well, we're back. Joe says, hey, dude. Uh, you remember that podcast thing we used to do pretty consistently? Like, is that still a thing? Are we still doing that? No, I, I thought was it was like, done, man. I, I thought you were like, dropping off on me. Oh, it was, it was nice. The time off was nice. Being off social media. Because it requires doing that. No. Being off social media, not having to read every freaking article coming through on a very somewhat active but boring off season as most are in my opinion and i said look i said look i said look there's a probably enough news we should probably do one okay no we didn't stop doing the podcast okay we're here i'm glad to be back it's been a, it's only been a month by the way which it's probably the longest break in like three years. So fair, fair. But Joe's got to push me in the off season, man. If he doesn't push me in the off season, then I'm just going to be dormant. Okay. Because that's how it goes. Plus the, the news really was such a slow trickle and some of it was so irrelevant for the most part, like not totally irrelevant, but some, some, a lot of stuff came recently. Got a, a lot to talk about with, with women's basketball, for crying out loud. Changing women's basketball right now. Um, name and rights on the dome, we'll give you our thoughts on that. A little bit of football, a little bit of basketball. A little, very little bit of basketball. And whatever else we decide in between. Right, Joe? Yeah. So real, yeah. real quick before we really get started, let's take care of the somewhat insignificant thing, in my opinion. Which is the name and rights. So they finally ended this deal in perpetuity with Carrier after, what, 42, 43 years? I think this thing was signed in 79. I think they were offered, what, $2.75 million back in 79, 80, something like that, for basically the naming rights forever. Um, and, you know, then they... Packed up all their stuff. Never gave. Never put dome in the AC. Or never put AC in the dome. Packed up all their stuff. Uh, laid everybody off. Left town, and uh, Syracuse is left with the Carrier Dome, which is just a non-existent thing. By the way, never really called it the Carrier Dome growing up. Nostalgic, yes. Um, that's what they gave us. I think for the most part is, is everybody knows the carrier dome. So no matter where you are in the country, if you're an NCAA basketball fan, even an NCAA fan period, you know, the carrier dome, which has been huge, right? It's been huge. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like one of the three wonders of NCAA to some extent for us. It is, you know, I mean, it's not like, you know some of these other places, but it's a dome. It's no, on campus. It's, it's one of a kind. Years, right? Yes, it's one of a kind. Uh, so, um, my point is that is that it's one of a kind. They gave us that, but once Carrier left, all the people got laid off. Uh, there was a sour taste for a while, and Syracuse has been trying to get out of this thing for quite some time. So, they're going to be they they struck a deal with JMA Wireless, which is a I'm sure everybody already knows this by the way. I'm just going to say it anyway. There's a lot of people out of town, out of Syracuse that listen to, by the way. So just to recap, I think they're based out of Liverpool. Um, they are, they're like a mobile connectivity company. Uh, they claim to be cutting edge um, and they do a lot of networking stuff like that. So they're going to be actually adding some 5G wireless into the dome. So the, the Wi-Fi in the dome 
is supposed to be on the ups. We'll see about that. But, yeah. right? So, it's been awful. It's been terrible forever. By the way, I never <laughs> called it the, the carrier dome. I always called it the dome, even growing up. The dome. It's always yeah, going to be the dome. Been, right, exactly. And I'll still call it the dome. So, um, so I guess my point in t- 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 saying that is that I don't care. Uh, and I think I said on Twitter they, they could call it the turd. I, I don't care as long as it's as, as long as they're taking me to bowl games, they're they're and they're taking me to NCAA tournaments. I don't care what they call it. Doesn't matter. It's going to be the dome to me, right? Right there with you. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to be said about that? Do you have anything no. else to add? Okay. I mean, that was really only a matter of time, right? Yeah. The way that yeah. deals and inflation and money are around. I mean, it's they didn't obviously. do anything for for the place. They gave him two point seven five million back in seventy nine, and then right that was that was it. They're just supposed to hold their name forever. Well, it sounds like a crappy deal. <laughs> it sounds that, like that, a that terrible Syracuse deal. Made, right? Yes, exactly. But back then, that was a lot of money. But then, what are you going to do to keep it? You know, updated. They they did nothing and, comp- and comparable to you know other stadiums that were going to be other opponent stadiums right. and keeping it you know a recruiting a recruiting tool other than just as a dome. Right. So, with that said, that brings me to this real quick, and then we'll move on. We'll get into the nuts and bolts of everything. The seats are apparently going to be navy blue. Now, I care way more about the color of the seats than I do the name of the dome. And I just do. And I just feel like, I've said it on the show before, my favorite jersey is orange helmet, orange jersey, orange pants, white socks, orange shoes. That's that's my jersey. That's my favorite jersey, right? So I'm all about. So the you orange. think this should be orange? I think the seats should be orange. I think they should be orange, and I think their excuses are bad. Uh, something about um, empty seats will be seen easier, and then there was another one. Uh, oh, they couldn't get the right shade of orange. They couldn't. <laughs> they were worried about the shade of orange they were going to get. Look, that's dumb. That's really dumb. I don't think it matters. Besides, I think the first one's not that dumb. The first one is not that dumb, but you that's that that you need to fix that regardless because guess who's going to see it anyway? The fans watching it on yeah. TV. So <laughs> so anyway, uh, I am a little bit more upset about the blue seats than I am the the whole naming rights thing and that's just me because I'm petty and I want orange <laughs> stuff everywhere. I mean, we're not the Syracuse blue for shit's sake. We're the Syracuse Orange. I think yeah, everything should be orange. Okay, not the field, not the turf. But the, <laughs> but the oh, you seats. You don't want to go Eastern Washington, Boise State style. No, no Boise State. I can't even. I get headaches watching those games. And Have you seen the Eastern Washington one? It's red, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's red. Yeah. Yeah. And Boise State's blue, which is bad enough, mm. but the red is is awful. It is. Yeah. There's hey, a, you do you do that? It blends in with the jerseys, so it can help. That's a real home field advantage. That's true. I think turf should be green. I don't care if it's fake or real. It should be green, except for your logo in the in the center. I'm a, tradi- gotcha. a traditionalist in that sense, right? So, um, right? Not petty when it comes to the field. But no, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to the field. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I mean, but if you're gonna take I out, I don't care anyway. So I know you don't care. I knew it you makes wouldn't. sense though. Syracuse orange. I mean, right? right. It makes sense. Right. And we're discussing old news and everybody's probably shuffling forward 30 seconds at a hit. But that's yeah, fine. Probably. That's fine. You heard it, but you didn't hear it from us yet. So here, here, we're, here we are talking about it. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been here for a month, so yeah. Yeah. Whose fault is that? I'm blaming you because all you got to do is get in my ear and be like, hey, man, we should do a show. We really should. And I'd be like, fine, Joe. Fine. Send me some links. And I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. And then I'll tell you to be there at 7, and, and you'll show up at 7.15. I'll be like, wow, some things never change. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, real quick, before we continue. Uh, yes, ColorCast, still with us. Can you believe it? I can't. ColorCast <laughs> is a live, audio-only sports talk platform, free to download and use, talk to us, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time, perfect for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and reacting to breaking news. Look, we still haven't been there. I'm looking forward to football season, maybe doing a little something for football season on ColorCast. I don't know. Look, it's one of those things that 
I can't just keep starting over. But you don't have to go there just for us. That's the point. You can go there for all kinds of things. So what if we're not on there a lot? You can go there, join, and find so much other stuff. It's free to download. All you got to do is go to your iOS or Android store, download the damn thing, create a profile, link it to your Twitter account, join up a a, a group or league or whatever you want to do inside the app. You can follow us. We are on there Um, in spirit. At Q's Militia. Be notified when our room goes live. As always, sign up for the notifications. All right. Thank you. Color cast. All right. Look, moving on to more important things besides the color of seats, which is important, by the way. And James, our boy James Zuba had a brilliant tweet. And you can look it up. Something along the lines of, yeah, who would want orange seats in their dome? I think he showed Oklahoma State and... Golly, I would start this. There was a couple other ones. And they were all orange seats. And they look beautiful, by the way. So, <laughs> All right. Felicia, legit black. Really doing yeoman's work over there at women's basketball. Now, you could say what you want about, I guess, maybe taking... By my count, she's taken four transfers um, from her... Buffalo team, and then Lexi McNabb, who is Donovan McNabb's daughter. By the way, I did not remember this, but Donovan McNabb's wife, also Syracuse alum, she was MVP in in 97, which is the year I graduated high school for the women's basketball team. So Lexi going to go ahead and follow in her mother's footsteps, hopefully, and she will be a new recruit next year. Uh, She had committed to Buffalo. And we'll follow uh, Coach Black, Legit Black, to uh, Syracuse. So that's good. Also, Daisha Fair, uh, Jr., she uh, is a – she was a leading scorer in the MAC, by the way, fourth best in the entire nation. She averaged over 23 points a game, so she's excellent. Uh, Cheyenne McEvans, also coming from Buffalo, another guard. Um 5.6 5.6 rebounds a game. Let's see. Um, what is it? Cyana? Cyana? Sinai Wilson? Yeah, it's Sinai. S- okay, Sinai. Okay. Uh, freshman forward last year. She's from Australia. She's going to be um, coming, following coach as well. And uh, Georgia Woolley. So she was a newcomer in past... Uh, last year as well, averaged 14.6 points a game. She's got a lot of scores on this team. Really, really good scores. So that's really oh, good. Oh, yeah. And then, and then she's got three more additionals that are coming in, too. Another transfer, by the way, from Kentucky. I think she originally started at, at Temple, but she's coming from Kentucky 6'4". Forward. So, yep. Um, anyway, I mean, she's she's... Making moves. We didn't talk at all. Uh, shame on us about women's basketball. But in my defense to that would be, did you hear us mention much of anything about Syracuse lacrosse? <laughs> so there, there was, was some. So there were some bad years, right? I mean, I know yeah. we talked about at the beginning of the year. We talked about uh, obviously, you know, Coach Hillsman and everything that he was going through, and then a new coach and stuff like that. But we knew we had a max. Um, a mass exodus of players through the transfer portal. And then when, you know, obviously this coach left and there were some more players. So we only have five returning players um, from last year's roster returning. So, um, yeah, I mean, the new coach, I mean, she was a great coach in in Buffalo, obviously a great player for Syracuse. Probably probably the most prolific women's basketball player for Syracuse, right? And Sue right, Ludwig, yeah. too, one of her coaches that she hired, also a really good women's basketball player for Syracuse. Yeah, assistant coach from Buffalo that she brought over. Right, yeah. And um, like you said, I mean, you know, bringing over the Buffalo transfers, players that know her system, know her as a coach, getting Lexi McNabb, you know, obviously she was slated to go to Buffalo because of the coach, and now she's going to Syracuse, which is just crazy because both of her parents went there, right? And then you bring in a center from Kentucky, a forward from Temple, 
uh, Kyra Wood, and then a, uh, Asia Strong, who's a forward from Wichita State. So you talked about the players that came in from Buffalo. Um, Daisha Fair, I believe, I don't want I want to say she was the MAC Player of the Year, but I know that I'm almost positive she was the leading scorer. And Georgia Woolley, uh, she was the the MAC Freshman of the Year last year. Um, you said she averaged 14 points, and she was a freshman. So they have guards that can score, and then they go on top of uh, everything and go and get two forwards and a center uh, from the um, transfer portal as well. Plus, with the players that we uh, already have there, uh, hopefully she can make something happen. But I think that. You're going to probably look to a lot of those Buffalo players to kind of, you know, come in and go just stay I mean, on those, the same pass. Yeah, there's the four. The coach, right? There's four Buffalo players and then one commit. So you already Not have right. four of them that have played for Legit Black, and she's got the familiarity with them, obviously, and it's going to be a huge deal. And so, I mean... Maybe we'll talk about women's basketball again next year. But it seems to me when you look at all of these teams, so Syracuse football, basketball, and lacrosse have never finished below 500 in the same um, scholastic year. Yeah, the same, what do I want? I don't want to say scholastic year. What do I want to say? Something else. Academic year? Academic year, yes. Uh, they, They have never, it's never happened until this year. Uh, the women's team, awful. Just a terrible year to be a Syracuse fan. When you look at football and you're like, man, losing three games in, in, in on last drives, like in a row, I think. Um, as, clo- as many close games as we had in football and how close we were to getting a bowl game and how, how that team actually did start to kind of find a rhythm in, in the squandered opportunities in the beginning of the year. And you look at basketball and you think – the Jesse Edwards injury and, um, you know, everything Some else that came around with early. that. Some yeah. of the bad losses early there. You think of Owen Hilds um, for lacrosse and his injury. You think about what's his name from last year that kind of, you know, not a classy guy. You know, really good player, not a classy guy. He ends up transferring, right? Well, I don't even remember the dude's uh, name. And you, get, and you get new coaches, new system. And then you get a new, yes, and then you, now you've got a new coach. Um, and both of the in, in women's basketball and um, lacrosse, when you look at everything having to do with with the big three sports, you know, and you think, well, football had its problems. Well, there's basketball. Basketball started rough. Well, they might look up. Well, they didn't. Well, we got always got lacrosse, uh, and then no. So to see the moves that are being made, I think that the women's basketball team stands out. To me, as far as the most improved team out of these that we're talking about today for next year seems to seems to look like to me, it looks like the women's basketball team. It seems like they may fix all of their woes. And you got a fantastic play former player slash coach who can recruit. And yeah. and it's gonna be it's gonna be some glory days for women's basketball. I feel like it's gonna be really good. Well, yeah, and and the one positive you can say is that Quentin Hillsman did bring Syracuse to a point to where, like, you know, they're in the ACC and they made the what the championship game the one year. Um, He made him they he made the school in women's basketball actually predominant again the name. So um, that's not just going to go away in one or two years. Uh, And then you bring on like you said a former alumni. Um, You know, there was some 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 issues in as far as character issues and stuff like that and things behind the scene but still there is a positive you know i I still think that syracuse women's like it just didn't just fall off like they're starting to you know gain their name um and reputation i don't think it's going to fall off just because of you know one coach and some things came out i think that it obviously affected the players that were currently there and that he was recruiting but uh now that they've you know, cleaned all that up and you got her in there. Like Felicia, like, I, I think that you're exactly right. I think that, that this is going to be able to, to get, get going rather fast. Uh, be a quicker you know, turnaround. Toughest, I feel like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I her. think so too. I mean, I think that the toughest thing this year, and I think a lot of what's going to happen is, you know, um, basically the, you know, Daesh affair and Georgia Woolley, you know, some of the better scores that she had on her team and then the Mac, 
Um, can they turn around and do that in the ACC? Because obviously it's a pumping competition. I'm not saying they can't. Oh, they but, won't be as dominant, you know, you, you look at Well, yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, Daisha Fair, I mean, I think she's averaged 20 points in like two or three years that she's been. So she's a scorer. Uh, she's the best in, player that they had and the, probably the best player that's going to be on this Syracuse team too. I mean, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, you could that's argue that probably the top three players, or at least the top two players from Buffalo probably transferred and, and followed Felicia. So, and a coach. So right. I mean they're setting themselves themselves up for for success at least this year in year one when it's the most difficult. Um, so hopefully they can have you know a good year and then they can help with the recruiting and so on and so forth. But she might not even need help. You know um, this is her first year. She's got a bunch of transfers and sometimes that doesn't actually you know it, sometimes it takes a little while to figure it out. So uh, it's not a guarantee, but definitely excited for the, the you know the way that this uh, woman's team is going, especially after all the drama and stuff that happened last year. Yeah. So um, with that, I guess let's talk real quick about lacrosse. Cause you know, this was probably out of all of it was the bigger disappointment in my opinion. Um, you have the Owen Hiltz, as I mentioned injury. I think it was, I think it was a, I mean, in practice or something before the season even started, if I remember right. Yep. And then Tucker Dordovich, he's going to be leaving. Um, you know, I think he had, he had 94 goals for his career and 47 of them came this year. So, I yeah. mean, just dominated this year and he's entering the transfer portal. D- you know, it's a little, that one's a little weird to me. I think he only has one year of eligibility left, I believe. If yep. I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it's a COVID, it's a, be a COVID, like a, um, what do you want COVID year, it? yeah. Yeah, COVID year for him, right, to, to be able to use that, I think. And, um, you know, you just – now, with this, with all of this said, by the way, and got the number one recruit in the nation coming in, and Joey Spolina – or uh, Spolina. Yeah, Spolina. So, uh, excellent midfielder. Uh, can He's um, a magician with the scoring. I mean, he's if you look at his – you want to talk about – when I talk about highlights, you watch his highlights, like those are freaking highlights, dude. The dude is putting on a show. He's yeah. a, he's amazing. He's amazing. So uh, really excited about that. So we've got that coming in. Owen Hiltz should be back. But we had two more besides Tucker that went into the portal today. Mikey Berkman, who was fourth leading scorer on the team with 14 goals. And then Jack Savage, who is one of their better uh, face-off guys. So... You know, you look, talk about face-off specialists and things like that. That's almost like, just in my opinion, it's almost as good as having a goalie. I mean, getting you possession after a goal is huge, especially if you're the one that scored the goal, right? To be able to yep. to, to to take possession and get on offense. So, um, it sucks. I mean, I don't know what's going on there. I'm not real sure, but um, you know, you got to imagine with a year like they had, by the way, this was the lacrosse Syracuse men's lacrosse worst year ever. It was their worst year they've ever had in the history of the program. Mm. <laughs> so. No, I mean, dude, they, they, they had a huge change, you know, I mean, they changed their whole coaching staff. I'm sure there's a change of philosophy and a change in, um, you know, coaching technique and stuff like that. And I think that, I mean, it's pretty normal, especially this day and age, with the transfer portal and not having to wait a year. Um, oh, it's huge. Have, yeah, it's huge. If you have a coaching change, I mean, there's going to be players to transfer just based off the fact of like, okay, I see what's going on or I see the writing on the wall or this person's coming in. Because, I mean, Tucker Dordovic, to me, it's a little weird because, like you said, I mean, he's one of the better players, but he had he, he was forced to play more attack this year because of yeah, he had to switch Owen, roles of Owen Owen Hiltz's um, yeah. injury, right? And he, but he shined though. He shined he, playing attack, right? Right. But now next year you got Owen Hiltz coming back, right? And then you have Spolina well, Tuck- coming in, and they got some other guys coming in. So, um, and well, you Tucker and Spolina that. would play on opposite sides of the field together. But I mean, I mean, but we don't know the whole roster. We don't know, you know, what happens behind closed doors if the coaches and 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 if he gets along with the new coaches. We have no idea um, if he wants to use his other year to go to a different graduate school and some major that Syracuse doesn't have. Like, 
there's there's always different things. Um, so I don't want to you know go crazy and think that the world's falling apart just because you know three players went in the no, transfer there's portal. There's still a lot of you know talent I mean? going to be on that team next year. Still a lot of talent oh, going to yeah. be on that team next year. A lot, and you know, again, it takes a little bit of time sometimes to get used to a new coach and you know the philosophies and all that kind of stuff. So, and you you um, just think though with a legend like Gary Gate, I mean. This dude's going to have it together. He's going to put it together. He's going to jump right in the driver's seat of this thing, uh, take them to the freaking Sweet 16. They're going to be a tournament team easy, right? And then as you're watching throughout the year, you're just like, oh, my gosh. It was just so hard to watch Yeah, those lacrosse yeah. games this year. Yeah, the Notre really Dame like game, the old... first one, oh, dude, oh, they dude, just got yeah. destroyed. I mean, yeah. By the time I got to it and turned it on, it already started. I turned it on and I turned it right off. So, but then what I mean, was the other one? The UNC game. See, you go and then you look at the UNC game, and UNC was ranked like what eighth or something like that, or maybe not, mm-hmm. maybe fifteenth or was it eighth? They were ranked and they almost won and they blew it, like totally imploded with a, like less than a minute left. Yeah. So, anyway, they were up yeah. by one, end up losing by one. They had some close ones, and again, you see this, I think, a lot, especially nowadays. And- like I said, if he comes in and he's that hard-nosed coach that's, you know, old-school coach, you know, mentality, then, you know, the, these generations of kids, some of them can't handle that stuff. So Yeah, it's too bad. I think know, some of that a, There's could a be bunch of, of different things and reasons why this could happen. So, And, we're, again, this is a situation that we're never going to know unless a player comes out and says anything. So it's all speculation. Yeah. Once again, I just is. think they have a good enough recruiting class coming in and enough returning players that, you know, they could definitely be far and away better than this year. Next I think mean, Gary Gate did a great job with the women's team. You know, I don't know how long it took him to turn that thing around or, you know, I don't know because I'm going to be honest with you. I only watched any women's lacrosse uh, if they were in the tournament and that was, you know, just not something. I mean, I, just not. Well, just not something I put on my calendar, guys. I'm not gonna lie. So. Yeah. yeah but yeah. But I don't think that they were looked at the way they are now. No. No. So that's what I'm saying. Gary Gate got there. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, just things just take time. You think a legend like Gary Gate, like I said, is gonna hop in the driver's seat and, and and drive this thing hard, and you know, it just didn't happen. So it's where you set your expectations. Sometimes we always talk about that. So and, and that's yeah. that's exactly where my disappointment came from. I set my expectations way too high. And I was a little shocked. So, anyways, yep. it's all good. Uh, it, it almost can't get worse. That the, the men's lacrosse cannot get worse. It can't. And, and if no, you're well, a legend, next, next year will be easier to watch because the expectations will be lower. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. All right. Real quick before we finish up with some football and basketball, color cast. One more time. Live, audio-only, sports talk platform, free to download news, talk to us, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time, perfect for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and reacting to breaking news. All you need to go is go to the ColorCast app in your iOS or Android store, download it, create a profile, link it to your Twitter, and join the league or group. Follow us at Hughes Militia to be notified if or when our room goes live. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's do let's do football first. There's not a ton of basketball, but let's do football first. So, um, talked a little bit about the year. We've already recapped the year. We already know what the hell's going on there. So we're watching the draft. Or if you're like me, you were just headed on the background, maybe a little bit, or glanced at it over at the bar. Uh, first time since 2017, no orange football players were taken. In the draft, which is a little disappointing, right? Uh, but we did have some some three undrafted free agents got invited to camps. All D linemen: Josh Black, Kinsley Jonathan, and uh, McKinley Williams. So Josh Black got an invite from the Saints and the Bears. I don't think he's made a decision on that yet, right? And he's from Chicago, isn't he? From I think he I think he just chose the Bears. He, okay, all right, my bad. I did not know that. Okay, um, so he's from there. So yeah, I guess he's going back closer to home. Kingsley Jonathan. Um, he signed an undrafted free agency contract with the Bills right down the road. That's pretty cool. That's cool for Syracuse slash Bills fans, right? That's, yeah. It's always cool to see, you know, your your um, one of your college faves 
in your pro jersey too. You know, that's yeah. that's an easy buy, right? Yeah. So, um, so but the thing with him is, and Joe could probably explain this a little bit more. He was he was the number one overall pick in the global draft by the Montreal whatever these guys are. What are they, Joe? Al- what are they? Uh, Alouettes. Al- Alouettes? What the hell is an Alouette? Uh, I mean, who knows? Uh, huh? Who knows? Uh, what did we think it was earlier? <laughs> I said... <laughs> Aquanauts? What the hell did you call them? <laughs> I said Argonauts. There's another team. There's okay. another team where they're... Okay. Which we found out is a Canadian space band. Astronaut. The Argonauts. Alouette is the French word for lark. It, uh, they're larpers? Or did lark. you say lark? Lark. Oh. Okay. And what is what is lark? <laughs> English. The lark is a bird. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Fair enough. Lots of birds in the NFL. Um, yes. So, anyways, he has signed an undrafted free agency contract with the Bills. Now, that's not to guarantee him... On a, sp- on a spot on the roster. So I guess what the Alouettes did was they chose him in the no- number one overall pick um, to to kind of secure his spot if it doesn't work out with the Bills. So if you take that, if you're if you're making that pick, you really you're really banking on him not making it with the Bills. I mean, you got to yeah. be. You got to be right. Pretty much. Otherwise, yep. that's a I mean, wasted first-round pick. Overall, overall first pick, I should say. So Yeah, that would be a wasted pick if you made an NFL roster, correct? Okay, all right. And that's how that's that works, that right? Game. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's, he's, he's, they're drafting the rights to a player just in case the player doesn't make an NFL roster and just in case he wants to go and play in the CFL. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, McKinley Williams undrafted free agent contract signed with the Colts. So, uh, you know, all all three of these players. Surprise. I mean, are you a little surprised by Josh Black not getting drafted at all, or, or no? Is that not surprising? No, I don't think. Honestly, the only player to me Cody. that was eligible for the draft that put up good enough numbers to actually look at to be drafted was Cody Roscoe. Yeah. But when you look at his measurables, I mean, he's not going to get drafted. I mean, there's going to be a player from some random directional state college U, right. That maybe barely played, but because he showed up at a combine and he bench pressed a whole bunch and ran a great 40 and he's got great size. He'll get drafted because of upside versus Cody Roscoe. I mean, that's just, that's just how that works. So um, I didn't expect any of them to get drafted. I'm a little surprised that Roscoe didn't get uh, uh, an invite to any camp. For yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, I did. Well, and yeah. I know the. I know you said what you said. I I I saw something about Aaron Servais possibly getting um, an opportunity to go to Jets camp. So um, and obviously, <laughs> players can turn around and not accept it. Things can happen. Players, you know, teams can cut players and choose to to pick up different players. So, I mean, there's still time for Cody Roscoe to get a chance to, you know, get in a camp and, and try to get into a preseason and, and make a team. But, um, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't, but I'm not surprised that none of them got drafted. Not at all. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting it, but I mean, I was, I'd be lying if I wasn't a little surprised by it, but I mean, you just got to look at the production. I know, I mean, but who? At, I mean, I, I know, but you see, you when you, when you watch it, when you watch this draft, and you're like, I never heard of that guy. I never heard of that guy. I never heard of that guy. Never heard of that guy. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I, it's just how I feel about it. Obviously, I'm not watching every game. I don't know every player, but um, first time since 2000 team, uh, no Orangeman heard their name called. So it is what it is. We'll restart. Look, things are looking up though. Uh, by the way, we talked about Josh Huff, I believe, in the last show. Like, what what he was doing. Like, what is he doing? And we didn't see him in the spring game, right? Or anything like that. Or no, we did a little bit, didn't we? But he's, I, think. I think he was playing where he's going to be. And that is on the D-line. So, um, officially moved there. According to his dad, confirmed it, I believe, on Twitter, which is where all news is confirmed. Of course. On Twitter. So, especially if it's done by a family member. Um 
but but uh so yeah i mean that seems to be a better fit you know or joe questioned his some of his ability not in a snarky or mean way but question his ability as a as a running back uh mostly in the speed realm but a uh, big strong kid uh can probably be real really utilized there so well his speed now at that position is above average so um you know he always had the size now you go from you go from a position where you had below average speed um, to a, yeah, yeah. To to a position a that, guy. you know, now you're a little bit faster, helps you out. You already had the size. It's just pretty much building your body towards that. And, um, and learn, I mean, learning a whole new position like that, it's not. Well, yeah, but he played D-line in, in, in high school as well. So okay. um, he's got a little bit of familiarity to that, you know. And even to that point, too, I mean, I, I still think we're going to see Chris Elmore there um, as well. Cam Good, who we were hoping – a transfer from, I believe, South Florida, D tackle. He chose Michigan, um, so we kind of missed out on that transfer. And yeah, so I mean, we might be stuck with who we have. And so I mean, we got some guys that need to put some weight on and, and put some muscle on in this off season. And uh, you know, if we need to change the position of Josh Huff and we need to put you know Rhino out there at D tackle. You know, we know that Rhino is going to do what he needs to do for the team. Um, then maybe that might shore this defensive lineup enough to, you know, put a bandit on it for a season. How many scholarships they have left? Do you have any idea? It's got to be a ton. I don't know. I feel off like the it's top a ton. Head. I don't think it's a ton. You don't think so? You don't think it's like I mean, eight? Five, I don't think five so, to no. eight? No. Okay. All right. Well, good. That's I mean, what it feels five, to me. maybe closer. Okay. Yeah. Five's a lot. Five is a lot of scholarships to go to waste. I feel like it is, don't you? It's not a ton, but it's a lot. Yeah, I just haven't seen anything out there um, to really know off the top of my head. Yeah, I but. know. Well, I shouldn't have mentioned it because no one looks stupid. But whatever. <laughs> well, me <laughs> we're too. Used to don't it. worry about it. <laughs> we're used to no, it. No, I mean we've. I mean we're used to having extra scholarships and not filling them. All yeah, I so. know they don't always get filled, but um, in we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, with the basketball thing, because um, we still got a very important spot to fill there, and we'll talk about that then. Uh, one more thing pertaining to uh, Syracuse football: Cuse Penn State rivalry rivalry is going to get reignited. Reignited. This is my air quotes voice. Um, <coughs> this is this is a team that we've played second most, only to Pitt, and. The all-time series sits at 43-23 and 23 with five ties in favor of the Nittany Lions. And there's a big hubbub, man. We're going to face them. We're going to do, do a home-and-home home series or a home-away series if you're talking about your team. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And you have to wait a little while, okay? Like five years, uh, <laughs> which is why I have a hard time really caring about this. I, I'm not trying to be mean or rude, but the hubbub about this being actually like big time news to me just didn't strike uh, a chord with me at all. And part of that's because it's so far away. Like, I don't know what is football even going to be like in five years. Like, we're seeing all these changes with the NIL. Like, I mean, is Coach Babers even going to be there? Like, we don't even know if Coach Babers is going to be there in 2024. Okay? I mean, yeah. five years, that's a long time to wait for a couple, for one football game. Right? And that one would be at, at Penn State. In the 2028, we will play them again. So we'll have to wait. Syracuse fans will have to wait six years for this game to happen in the Dome. And maybe, maybe I'm being a jerk about it. But I, and, and I got DMs, and I'm, you know, I just I have a hard time getting excited about it, Joe. I apologize. So if you can add some excitement uh, to this conversation, please. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, <laughs> I know. Sorry. I know exactly where you're coming from. Now I'm not as bad as you, as far as we know. The fact that you don't even like going over recruits that haven't even signed yet, right? You know they it. Committed. You know right? it. So I get it. I get it, 100. percent You know, and and when you look at the recent history too, I mean, it wasn't so long ago that we signed a 
a home and home with Wisconsin, and then that ended up getting changed out, you know, because uh, it was so far away. Well, look too. Here's the thing: they've been kicking our asses. 2009, 28 to seven. 2008. These are the last two times I played them. 55 to 13. I just don't know, man. I mean, I just don't know. You play them this year, they probably do the same thing to us. I just have a hard time getting excited for it. I don't look at Penn State as a as a rival. I mean, I mean, the Rutgers game would be more exciting to me. That's more of a rivalry game to me than Penn State. Well, yeah, but that's just because of our age, right? Because if you look at it, the last if you go back the last time we played Penn State, at that time, Penn State was the most played. I mean, you got to think we played Pittsburgh every single year since that last time. So the last time we played Penn State, Penn State actually was the team that we've played the most ever. And because of our age and because of when they actually had the rivalry, um, that's why. Because they played every year back in the 80s and under, 70, 60. You know what I mean? So um, that's why. But when you look at the numbers, I can understand. But it's like you said, it's hard to get excited about it. Um, you know, it's easy to use it as a recruiting tool. But, I you know, guess. then again, how but then again, how much does that help, right? To play devil's advocate, like, oh, we played the best teams, right? But, you know, we're already in the ACC, and this is really just a what comes first, right? I mean, are you really going to gain recruits? Like, we could have we could have a really good year this year, um, compete very well, but because of our schedule, because we scheduled, well, because we have Notre Dame, and then because we scheduled Purdue and all these, you know, like, we might not even get a bowl game. So, like, I guess, like, where's success measured when it comes to college football, right? Is it measured in the wins and losses in the bowl games, or is it measured on the competitiveness of the teams that you play? Well, it's a mix um, of both, right? Well, yeah. And, again, I mean, so Kevin Wall, he had a he had a uh, article today in Noons, and he was talking about this, pretty much the same thing. And he went through and actually showed – how many bowl appearances since 2013 when we joined the ACC has all the ACC teams had. And we're in last place. We've had two. Yeah, We've had two bowl games since 2013. And the next lowest is Virginia, Georgia Tech, tied with four. So the next what, lowest have double R's. I wonder what basketball looks like. Well, right, I mean, we can look at that all we want. But, you know, you look at some of these. Some Wake Forest has got six. Boston College, six. Duke, five. And when you look at these teams – the reason why they've had those bowl games is because of the fact that they didn't schedule the Penn States and all these, the Purdue's and all these other teams in their nine conference. Right. So realistically, I mean, that's really what you want to look at is what do you think is going to help recruiting and getting this team to the next level? So I'll tell you that for a while, the Wake Forest and the Dukes and those guys of the world, I mean, before they made it a rule, they were, they were scheduling two double Double uh, one double A schools. There was, you know, some mid major schools, and they were getting they were guarant they were scheduling a guaranteed four and zero non conference. You win two conference games, and you're you're in a bowl game. And um, in some schools, it has helped. I mean, we've seen Wake Forest. They've they've gotten a little bit better. I think that's how NC State started when Dorn got there. Um, Duke had some good some good seasons, and and that's really I think. The one beef, I think, with some of the play, like some of the fans, is like they don't care that we're playing Penn State or Notre Dame or Purdue. Or yeah, sure, it puts butts in the seats, and you get a good, a cool game where y'all something you to look sell forward to in five dome, years. Right? You, you know, make, what something to look forward to in five years? But not even that. It's like it's almost like it's like a money grab for like the school. Like, oh, we got a home game for this, and but what are we doing to like the school? I mean, if you, I bet you, got I bet blue, you the fans would seats. definitely take. Uh, a BS non-conference schedule is to be able to guarantee a bowl game every year versus, oh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, schedule a super difficult non-conference to where it's like, it's going to, it's going to hinder be tough to it's just because, go because, two to two and two, right? Cause like, our conference is hard enough as it is. Right. And you know, you're playing Clemson every year and yeah. it's just and difficult. And you don't get into the post and then opposed to, basketball you don't get put into the postseason based upon your strength schedule 
They right, don't it's look not at your measured like they, that. They don't. No, it's not measured at your record and then comparable to what your strength schedule is. It's literally you got to get six wins. This is your benchmark. Yeah, Florida State every year. NC State's been really good. You know, we got to beat all these teams too. So when you add, and I'm 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 someone who really thinks like like to I'm more of a moderate there. So I mean, yeah, throw a hard one in here, here and there, and then you know let's sprinkle some cupcakes on here. Because we're going to need them. Because I just feel like we're always going to need them in the conference we're in, especially being uh, in the Atlantic side of the ACC, which I believe is the tougher, without a doubt. Well, yeah, and again, side. yeah, Notre Dame's screwing us, per usual. Per usual. <laughs> because the whole thing is, is when it comes down to it, it's – they they had signed an agreement to stay in the ACC that you have to play like – I don't know if it's three or four. You know, you can't just pick your own schedule, Notre Dame. You got to play at least three or four ACC teams. And you got to kind of don't, don't even get me started. That is such a joke. Yeah, and they got to switch around and change and play different ones. So now it's set up to where Notre Dame plays everybody like every three or four years. And it's like, thanks. And it doesn't even count as a conference game. No, it doesn't even count as a conference game. So it's so stupid. So, so now we're guaranteed one out of every three or four years that we're going to be playing Notre Dame in a non-conference game. Thanks. And then all of a sudden you schedule a Purdue. What what happens if, I mean, sh- crap, it could be a situation where we're playing Notre Dame this year, right? Maybe this t- 2028 we got Notre Dame and Penn State in our non-conference schedule. Cool, right? I mean, yeah, we might have the number one strength of schedule and we'll win four games. Like, I guess that's just where yeah, I mean. There's no, there's no quads. There's no yeah, quad no. one wins, quad one <laughs> no, games. There's nothing. Yeah. The whole main point, and if we scheduled correctly, then we would make a bowl game every year. I think if you ask this Syracuse team to go out and win two ACC games, I think they can do it every year. Yeah. And I mean. Minus the COVID year with DeVito. Right. 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 I got to be honest. I like the I like the series we had with Liberty. I thought that was fun. They were pretty good games. There's still one yeah, left. Yeah, but I, I mean that's like that's about as far as you should go. Well, that's right? what I'm saying. Is that tweener yeah, yeah, like yeah, mid major? Yeah. Maybe make the top twenty five. Maybe a top thirty team. Right. Yeah. That's perfect. Like, I'm not trying to play a top five team from the Big Ten. You know, exactly. like that's just. Like we don't need right, right. What, what do you want? Are we gonna play Ohio State next, just for shits and giggles? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was just schedule Washington. I mean, we've seen this. I mean, we've we've scheduled. We've gotten nine conference schedules. We've seen this in the Greg Robinson era and all the eras, really. I mean, I think the one coach that actually took advantage of this was Marone. I mean, we had a decent quarterback and all that stuff, but I think that we played in bowl games because of the way that we scheduled our nine conference schedule. Um, Schaefer did the same thing. He scheduled tough teams, and uh, it just it really hasn't stopped. Um, we don't schedule to make a whole game. And you can say, oh, we're not going to take the easy way, but at the end of the day, they always say what in football? You are what your record says you are. Yeah. At the don't end matter. Of the they don't look at who you play. They look at if you're in a bowl game. Yeah, and there's plenty of bowl games to grab, and there's no excuse why we shouldn't be making them. Right. So <laughs> I just think that that would help a little bit more. We've played for the past decade this whole – well, let's schedule some big guys in non-conference, and maybe it'll put butts in the seats. Like, I think we got to try to go towards the. I think we need to win. You want to put butts in the seats? Let's start winning. Right. Let's start winning. Let's make it fun again. It doesn't matter about the competition. You make a bowl game. You get butts in the seats, and then I feel like that kind of shows itself. Because I mean, players can say whatever they want when they go to visits to Syracuse and all this other stuff. If you go to a visit for Syracuse and you go through that whole game day experience at the Dome in the way that our attendance has been in the past couple of years versus probably any other type, even an average Power 5 conference team, it's not even close. It's not even close. I mean, there's probably there's probably recruits that just leave those, those recruiting, the recruiting visits laughing. Like, yeah, I had a good time. I partied with the fellas. There's some good guys, but, like, that, I mean, they can't even fill a 54,000, you know. Yeah. I mean, 
it's just it's tough. I mean, when you sit here and you look at these, the big, the loud house, the big name schools, the the SECs of the world. I mean, those guys are filling eighty five, ninety, a hundred thousand. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Stadiums. Yeah, and I've talked about that before. Like, we just don't have that kind of atmosphere. No, so it's a, it's, we don't. it's so it's so relied on so much local support in Syracuse. And, and I just feel like you're only going to get that by winning. And yeah, being that's consist- what I'm consistently a winner. Yes. You're not going to do it just because yes. you scheduled the Wisconsin or a Penn State. It's like, great. I'm going to pay sixty dollars to watch this get our ass kicked. Yeah, like, not fun. I'll sit home and do it. Type thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you know, it's been a minute, really. We have had a couple of good years, but it's been a minute. I mean, the McNabb days had were good years, dude. <laughs> yeah, we've had Schaefer had years. Last year was another year where we were a bowl team, but because of our schedule, we or because of things that we couldn't that were out of outside their realm, you know, injuries are some stupid, or not deciding when you want, you know, not deciding on a starting quarterback to the third week of the season, like stupid crap like that, like. Well, we, it was the fourth for, week, was it not? The third week oh, was yeah. like a little bit of a mix. We didn't decide yeah. on one until the fourth yeah. week. Yeah. I just think that in the past, you know, decade or so, like there's been seasons where we easily could have made a bowl game, even if it's a six and six, just sneak in and play one, you know. Um, and we didn't because of our schedule. And you just don't know how that affects you because we haven't seen it in quite some time. So, yeah. So I guess long story short. Uh, it's five years away. I'll get excited in four and a half years, maybe. I still don't even know where we'll be at. Oh yeah, like, and that's the whole argument that I had. It's not. We don't even know if it's going to be relevant. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen in four years? Yeah. Who? What's going to happen to the way the way the transfer portal is and nil? Like this transfer portal stuff has got to. The madness has got to end. Yeah, in the, the, the NIL stuff is starting to get a little bit out of hand. Joe and I talked about that a little bit off the air. Speaking of which, let's transition to some Syracuse basketball real quick. We talked about one legend, uh, his daughter, coming and joining the Syracuse basketball team, while another legend's son announced he's going to be entering the transfer portal. Chaz Owens, son of legend Billy Owens. Um, he's going to do so according to verbal commits. Uh, one good thing was is that it does free up another scholarship. But here's the problem. We're having a hard time getting people to take scholarships because we have had one freed up since Frank Anselm, and now we have two. I believe we talked about Quincy Ballard in the last episode. It would have been an outstanding addition, in my opinion. I know there's a lot of people who think differently, and that's fine. And by the way, you can send all your, your Penn State hate mail to me. That's fine, Twitter or Facebook. And... um. <coughs> It's just how I see it. But that's fine. I understand the excitement. I just am not, I'm just not there. That's just me. I'm a, kind of like that. I'm a cynic. I'm sorry. Um, so, Quincy, I think he would have been a great addition. Um, he ended up going to Wichita State. Now, uh, there's a yeah. lot of news on this front, I think, really starting to bubble up. Um, it makes me a little nervous that Syracuse really doesn't have a backup center right now. And I've heard a lot of. People shouting for Peter Carey, but we did talk about the, the, the knee injury. It's been a long recovery. He had some, uh, you know, the COVID stuff that he went through, too, in high school. And he's been had, he's had, to say the least, he's had limited time on the court playing. And I don't know the status of his injury. But we need a center. We need a backup center. We need someone to fill probably 12 minutes. With the way Jesse Edwards, if Jesse Edwards doesn't shape up a little bit, I'm more than that. Okay, 15 minutes. But depends it, on the ref. I think Jesse Edwards averaged 24, 24 to 27 minutes, something like that last year. So, um, <laughs> oh, you're so pathetic. <laughs> Joe, mouth and I love you to Heather, which I thought was sweet at first. And then. All I saw was a beer enter the picture. <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's fine. That's good, Joe. Good job. Um, I got to give you hats off to, for that, dude. That was slick. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah. I think Jesse Edwards averaged 24, 27 minutes, something like that last year. It was due to foul trouble. Obviously, he could if he could play all 40, Coach Wood, he's a tremendous player. 
So you need someone to fill that oh, time. Yeah. And who's going to do it, Joe, if we don't get one? So now we're hearing things about, and, and, and this Joe kind of elaborated on this to me earlier, there's some disturbing things going on with the NIL stuff. And, I mean, people are basically getting offered straight pay-to-play money. Yep. It, 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 is, it is just people being housed and... Um, you know, getting straight money. You know, Buddy, he was one of the first on this thing. Sold some jerseys, stuff like that. Do booster stuff as far as like autograph stuff. What? Now, I guess I was a little ignorant because I thought, well, this will be easy to police, right? Because yeah, right. <laughs> so I thought it would be. The, the, the one thing is, is the, the NCAA sucks at everything, and we and I. By the way, in my defense, I did mention that that they suck at everything, and they'll find some way this thing will get screwed up, and it's getting screwed up. And here we are, not even a full year into this thing, and we've got people in the transfer portal getting guaranteed money coming out. And according to Joe, you said John Wildhack, he says want to play that game, right? Well, it's either throw a punch or get knocked out. No. In my opinion, mm. if everybody's playing the game right now, and of course there might be limited booster money it, just in general, but if everybody's playing the game, it's either punch or get knocked out. And Joe, ex- explain what I mean. Probably there's people probably who already know, but I mean the problem is is so there's these things that are being the the companies. I'm talking about the companies. This- yes. So it's essentially the you, they're called collectives, right? And this is the you know, air quote collectives of schools that they have. And essentially when you, when something new comes up and it's a new rule or it's a new, this, you're going to have people that find come people out and to, 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 to hey, go wait, right to the loophole the loopholes, yeah. right? Yeah. Let's let me find the loopholes to help this help that. Right. And we talked about this and I said that this is basically just going to be opening up the whole boosters again, like everything before, because before it was boosters buying players and it was when you didn't have social media and all this technology to be able to track it all down. And it was handshakes, you know, thousand dollar handshakes behind closed doors. People didn't know what was going on. And that's how college football was back in the day. And now all this is is just a legalized way to do it. And right, so you have these schools, right? You have these schools that get these collectives, aka boosters with money that come together and form private companies or, you know, um, and then those companies are signing deals for NIL. And they're not doing anything for these companies. I mean, maybe a little sign and autograph here or this, this or that, but the, the payout isn't worth the, the work, so to speak, or the weight kind of. And when you have players that aren't even, haven't done anything, haven't shown anything and they're getting NIL, before they even show up on campus and throw or catch or run a football or make a tackle, they're getting this money from these collectives. That's essentially the same thing we were at before with the boosters and basically who's going to pay me the most. Yeah. And that's 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 where where I'm going to go. And that's where I'm going to go. Syracuse, not only is, you know, we've talked before NIL was even a thing. We talked First of all, I always had the players' backs on the NIL stuff, and I shouldn't say before it was a thing, but no, before it became it, before before it came a thing. No, but we have to definitely address that. This isn't us saying that we don't think that the players deserve money. Correct. This isn't. We're just. I was naive to the corruption that would follow in in the in the NCAA not not being able to police it because they police everything else that's stupid under the sun, but they fail at this every time. But do they historically, or do they not trying? Is that where you're going? I mean, I, because they might I not be they, trying. I think that they do. I think they, I think they do this for certain teams, oh, yeah, certain yeah, programs. Yeah, yeah, right. Cover, so it's cover, just like just anything else. Right? We've on. seen all yeah. these things. We saw what Syracuse got, the penalty they got for their whatever they did, right? And since then, we've seen more egregious things come out with less harsh penalties. So. Again, it seems to me like you can pick and choose, right? I mean, they were oh, talking about very, fake classes at North Carolina. Yeah, they're very Where did that pick go? and choosy. Where that, did that go? We didn't nowhere. hear about that. They didn't lose any scholarships, right? I'm talking about Zion Williamson getting paid, his family getting a house yeah. from Duke yeah. um, or maybe somebody else or whatever. But 
Where's that? That's no, there was, no, there was no one's talking about. There was something to do with the university itself and sneakers. And I believe it was Nike. But again, where's that? We're not talking we're about talk that, about right? It. Right. Because Zion Williams. I mean, a you star. had NC State. Den- Dennis Smith Jr. took a crap ton of money from NC State. What's going on there? Kansas, there was recruiting violation. What's going on there? Louisville, they had strippers for recruits and escorts. All stuff happened there. Yeah, okay. They stuff happened there. They fired a coach, but they took away a championship too. They delegitimized that championship. No, oh, I mean, which is, a, which by the way, you want to talk about Jim's 101 wins? Could you imagine if they stripped a championship? Like, I'd riot. I'm not promoting riots, but I'd be so pissed. I would be so pissed. Like, you can't do that. But anyway, they got hammered. Louisville got hammered. Yeah, but that's just, I mean, as bad as Syracuse, though? I mean... I mean, at the end of the I day, don't I don't think so because of all the sanctions that followed. I mean, we see they they, they got rid of their coach, it got stripped of a championship, and they rebounded pretty good. I mean, their football team took a couple years, but... Yeah, but let's be honest. I mean, even with, like, you've heard, like, announcers, like Syracuse fans, right? We still count the wins. Oh, absolutely. Right? Sure. Like, there's even announcers that, that still say, oh, Jim should have this many wins, right? So, like, no one's going to forget, even if you're a Louisville fan, no one's going to forget. The, like, that didn't get stripped from Louisville fans. That might have stripped from a book got or from a Wikipedia from a church, yeah. right? But, like, at the end of the day, as a Louisville fan, that, that didn't get stripped. It's just the point, though. It's just the point. But that's my point is is that they pick and choose, right? right so exactly. again, this is just a situation where they're going to pick and choose. Just right, like back in the day when SMU and the Pony Express, the whole thirty for thirty, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, they yeah. were just they were sitting there. They were just playing by the same rule, but because they played the rules when they finally got in there, they played them better and they started beating the big boys like Oklahoma and all that. Guess what? NCA stepped in and they gave them the death penalty, even though they knew all the other schools were doing the same thing. SMU just didn't have a player up in the NCAA looking out for them. That was it. So it's the same thing. It's always been political. And, I mean, until they figure out something fair across the board, it's always going to be political and corrupt. It's Well, you just said it. And and, and politics is corrupt, whether we're talking about in sports, in companies, in the government – they're always corrupt. But at the end of the day, the word is corrupt. The NCAA is corrupt. Yeah. It's corrupt. It's got bad people in there. You have people looking out for their own interests. And it's mm-hmm. just a, and, 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 and people with ties to this and that. And it's corrupt. There's too much it, power and money involved. It, absolutely. Which is, why I should, which is why I think if John Wildhead can, if, if they can have, the ability to be able to draw people out of the portal, then they should do it while it's still okay. Because apparently nothing's happening right now. And it seems to be going swimmingly for other people. So we need a center, Joe. I think we're going to... uh... Yes? I think think we are going to get... I mean, they're talking that there's going to be a collective for Syracuse... Probably by you know the end of the year, um, so, so I mean there are things on it. moving in okay. that direction. But as far as our center is concerned, basketball going back to that hole, um, that's where it's difficult. It's difficult to have a need, a dr- a dramatic need. That's a, but not a need for a starter, right? To have a ba- like, to need a backup problem. that bad, yeah. Like there's a reason these pe- these players are in the transfer portal. Well, I guess you know what though. It, it, closer it gets to November, the more desperate some of these guys will get. They're not all going to get taken. I mean, the portal is clogged, so there are still opportunities for Syracuse and for the people in there. And if they want to play, then they will. Um, they'll play. The closer it gets to. November when they get desperate, you know maybe they'll make a move. I just feel like at some point well, you can't wait that long, and, and it's got to be something that's done fairly quick. I mean, you got to yeah. get them well, there. When, when just... do kids go back to school, Joe? When do kids go to college? Oh God, Man, you're asking someone who's never gone to college. So... Well, I'm just saying, isn't it like in isn't it like in July? Don't I they... mean, they do summer stuff. They do summer classes and they do summer workouts. But if, so but if majority of the right, Division One athletes exactly. are there in the summer. That's what I'm talking about. Working out and that's oh, what I'm talking God. about. So when players transfer and stuff like that, they usually go there in like end of June, July. 
to start to acclimate to get there. I think people. yeah. So, I mean, hello, we're pr- approaching that. <laughs> so, I feel like um, I just feel like time's ticking on this, and obviously, coaches are doing the best they can. I think that we are. I think that we are at a disadvantage, to say the least. Syracuse is not just geographically at a disadvantage when it comes to these types of things, but now they're at a monetary disadvantage. And uh, money talks and bullshit walks. And, you know, and these sure. kids these kids know what they can get for what they're worth. So it's a waiting game right now. Syracuse can put out their feelers, put out offers. Uh, these kids may consider them, but wait to see what else can come along. They know what their role is going to be if you're a center coming to Syracuse right now. And yeah. they might hold that offer in their pocket until the last minute if they don't get picked up. And, you know, that's going to be that. But at some point, I think we find something, somebody, a body. I mean, it's almost all we can, you know, um, all we need at this point. But someone to develop. That's the important thing. You know, Jesse Edwards could leave next year. You, you know, well, it, yeah. And I think that's you hit the nail right on that as far as like kind of the waiting game. Right. Because like right now we've been dealing with players like that are looking for a place to start. Right. I mean, this is the second time that Ballard's pretty much bailed on his home team. Yeah, he obviously he doesn't think, want to be in Syracuse. I can understand that. I don't think that. that's, that's probably what it is it's at this point, right? Um, but also, like like I said about, like, these players are looking for a place to get playing time and start. And if you go somewhere and it's like, look, like, we need a backup center, but if Jesse doesn't get in foul trouble, he's going to play 30, 35 minutes, and you got to be okay with that. Um, so some players are going to have a problem with that, you know, and there's other articles where players are talking or, you know, people were talking about, um, like an, a cook, a cook who we, yeah, we he recruited, you again, remember right? him, we yeah. recruited him. He went to UConn, got an injury. Well, he just signed with Georgetown, uh, quite Wahab, another one that we recruited. That was Washington, he, right? Was that what he went to? Coach no, Hop? he chose, no, he chose Georgetown. Over okay, yeah, um, that's right. I over that. us, yeah. and then he transferred from Georgetown, went to Maryland, and now he's transferring out of Maryland. So I mean, this he's looking for his third team. I don't really want to touch that. Um, <clears throat> and and it's going to come down to these players are looking for a place to start. And near the end here, they're going to figure out that they're going to have to figure out like, okay, do I want to go to a Power Five school and be a backup this year? A play behind Jesse. Jesse will probably be gone after this year in hopes, and maybe I can be the starter next year, right? Or am I going to go to some mid-major kind of clown school? I don't want to call them clown school, but you know what I mean. Just I smaller school. Saying. Small school. So yeah. that I can, so so I can that get I can more minutes. And I can start and dominate, right? And dominate, get more minutes. Right. So uh, that's the point where we're getting down to very, very soon, and it's coming very, very fast. So, so I guess, you know, kind of to try to wrap this up here, I guess... Um, we'll just have to wait and see, right? But uh, I feel like Syracuse needs to do better. <laughs> I feel like they need Look. to do better. And and the other thing is is that the transfer portal, the not having to sit out a year. I thought this stuff was done. Is it not done at the end of this year? At the end of this off season, bro, I don't know. When Who does knows? this end? Who, like, uh, we're never gonna know because it's gonna take. Like, you could be a week away, and they'll be like, "Oh, we're gonna get another another year." Like we don't know. This is stuff just going on. Like I don't. Uh, they, we don't make. They decisions. have to figure it out. They're ruining. They're ruining. It's, college I sports. know it's sad. There's. I mean, we have to get some type of. Uh, there, there's you know. no. It feels like there's no organization. We got to sustain this. Oh God, no, bro. Right. I mean, dude, I mean, it's, it's been just... like this. I mean, it's been blatantly obvious for the last two years, but it's obvious before that that the adults in the room are killing it for everybody, um, and that's just the problem. You know, I just we got to get a guy, and you know, hopefully. Um, How do you feel about Syracuse without a backup center going in there with with Jesse Edwards and Peter Carey? So I'm going to give a shout out and you probably not like this, but, um, locked on Syracuse. Oh, Joe's favorite they, podcast. Joe's favorite podcast. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> other than this one, other than this one, right. 
Um, <laughs> they got new hosts recently, and I've been listening. And of course, um, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, it's a daily thing. I'm going to be up on it, you know. But Brad Klein, uh, can't imagine doing it myself without you. I could not imagine it. And he's doing it himself until Matt Bonaparte shows up. Um, but I've been listening to him, and um, I know that he said that no one's talking about Malik Brown, but we spoke Joe, about Malik Oh, Brown. well, we he must not listen Malik to Brown. us. How's that make you feel, Joe? Ah, oh, that's okay. He's young. I I'm, get a, it. I'm offended. Fine. I'm offended yeah, look, for Joe. Look. Joe Don't talked about Malik look, Brown a month ago. Look, look, look. He's X- 22. All right. He's still, you know, <laughs> he's still got, figuring he's it still, out. Yeah, right. he's still got, you know, he's still. Hey, look, but, I mean, at the end of the day, Dolzhai played center for us, right? Dolzhai is a different animal, though. 6'9", six, 6'10", six, he was 190 pounds soaking wet. Malik Brown is 6'9", six, 6'10", six, he's 6'9", six, or 6'10", and he weighs two ten right now, two fifteen. Yeah, that's great. So if and he's a great defensive he could, player, he could great could throw rebounder. Him in there. Sure. So and and Brad Klein, he brought this up in in locked on, and I've been on that. And um, you know, if Peter Carey can't come in to do something, um, I mean, I think that you you're probably looking at our backup center. If we don't get anybody else, and Peter Carey is a, a red shirt, then. Malik Brown's probably going to be that guy that goes in there as the undersized. I mean, he brought it up today, and I don't know if you agree, but he said that this year the best backup center for us, he said it was Jimmy Beheim over Frank Anselm. Who said that? Brad Klein. I'm oh, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I believe that. Do you agree with that? No. No, I don't think I agree with that. No, I don't think I agree with that either. I think Frank. Um, I mean, I think Jimmy's not going to be good there. Although Jimmy, Jimmy, I mean, he, he can grab there. rebounds. He can he can grab rebounds. He's better where he was. He's better at forward, obviously, but he um, he can grab rebounds. But I just don't know. He's not as physical as he needs to be down there. That's what made Dolzai Dolzai, dude. He did not. He was not worried about mixing it up down there. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't worried about getting hit. He obviously was not worried about hitting any other people with the no. amount of fouls he accumulated. Um, yeah. Jimmy, not that mentality. It's 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 a mentality thing. I just don't think Jimmy has it, and that's fine because he was <laughs> better where he was at anyway. Might, well, and then that's that could be good. That could be good. So I mean, I guess yeah. that's that's a good point, and I mean. Um, it, I guess it can make you feel a little better, but at the end of the day, it sure would be nice just to have that backup center. Cause I feel like this team has got such a, last I checked, I think it was a top 15 recruiting class. And I believe it's probably still hovering around there after Judah Mitz, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, no one else has made big enough moves to push us, push us out of that. I don't believe, but it's a talented group coming in, man. It's a talented group. If Malik Brown can play there, he can put that. That would be fantastic. But I would love to know what Coach thinks about like not exactly having a center, so or a start or a backup center. So yeah, um, we'll just have to see. Obviously, yeah. Well, if, I uh, mean, dude, a lot of it has to do with Benny Williams, right? I think a lot of. It, I mean, the upside of this class and this whole team, I think, is crazy. Because you know what you got with Jesse, you know what you got with Joe. I mean, Samir started showing up, but if Judah Mintz is going to come in and play better than Samir, then you can only be, you know, more positive about that, right? So, I mean, if Benny Williams as of shocking the world, as Jim Beheim said that he was going to, then, I mean, this is going to be a big difference in this team. Now, if we get the Benny Williams of last year, then we're going to need some people to step up. You know, and I know. Well, maybe you don't know, but I know. I feel Benny Williams is going to be a special player. I think you could tell that just from his, just the, on the character aspect of things. I could tell yeah. that last year. So, um, all right. Is that? Is there something else you need? Do you what? Are, what are you? What are you doing no, right no, now? No, no, no. What are no, you doing nothing. right now? I am trying to signal to Heather that what she's doing isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Is she cooking? No. Oh. No, she's not. Was she going to throw a beer at you this time? No, you know, she's not going to throw a beer at me, okay? The kid's got new toys, and I have to make them work. And she can't. I just see a bunch of n- no, 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 no. <laughs> I, just <laughs> <laughs> I just don't look. I'm not trying to have you know the woman that I love waste her time. 
doing something that's not going to work. You know? <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. all right. I mean, you're just doing her a solid at the end of the day. She's not going to see it like that. But I see it like that. Thank you. And that's all that matters is what I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, look, that's going to do it for us. We really appreciate all of you for waiting so long and still coming to listen. We really do appreciate it. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, look, as soon as more builds up, we'll be back. Joe will get on me, I'm sure. So we'll see you then. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.